This is what I got to do tonight. Hi, let's go. Hi guys, what's up? I'm the Michael and my 1087 here to give you guys a review of Transformers: Rise of the Dark Spark Wii U. Um, let me just say right now, I haven't actually been buying movie li license games, movie tying games, whatever these games are like Battleship, Spider-Man. I got the first one, but it was like cheap as hell. Um, so I've been just staying away from as long as possible. But then this game I heard is released a few months ago. And I thought, I didn't know if it really was a movie time game because of the title. But then developer acti uh, publisher Activision announced that it was a movie time game. And also a sequel to High Moon Studios' Fall of Cybertron. So I was a little hyped up for it. Especially for the Wii U version. I was really, I was, was going to buy for Wii U version day one. But then I got a little skeptical as in I did not know if I wanted Wii U or next year maybe. But that's a movie time game. So they're not really good. So, all the time. He wants to know how this game could do it, so I bought it on Wii U. Uh, so let me just say right now, this version might go just for Wii U. I mean, this might be missing a few features, I'll talk about that. But let's go into... Let me get my notes ready, because I really don't want to be spending, waste my time. So, Hyman Series, uh, as I show here, they made three Transformers games, right? They made War, Cybertron, a movie licensed game, Darker the Moon, which is a, the third Transformers game from Michael Bay, and Fall Cybertron, three Transformers games. Now, I don't know if they couldn't do the next one or something like that, but who knows. But then, they released another Transformers movie by Michael Bay, so Advent's like, why don't we just get another developer to release a new Transformers game and kind of have the same style of the old uh, Highland Studios uh, productions. So let's do that. So they, develop, they get developer Edge of Reality to get um, work on the game. They say it comes out in June, two days, a few days before the movie, and it's out. And let me just say right now, I really thought this game would be good. I really thought. Now, is it the worst game of all time that should be destroyed? But, I'm going to be honest with you, I played this. And compared this to Fall of Cybertron or War of Cybertron, I'm disappointed. Bigly. I'm very disappointed with this game right here. So... What is this? So, a lot now, as I said before, the game p developer act, uh, publisher actually said it was a movie tie in and a fall, a sequel to Fall of Cybertron. Now, that 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 shit off the bat kind of caused an identity crisis here because the game does not know what the hell does it want to be. Does it want to be a movie tie in game or does it want to be a sequel to High Moon Series' universe? It does not know what it wants to be here, basically. So, but, of course, they took in more of the Fall of Cybertron type of sequel more than the movie tying game. Because there's no Mark Wahlberg in here, or Stanley Tucci, or any other characters from the new films coming out. So, how, what is the story here? Well, it's really simple. It's basically the story of Lockdown, this new villain who does not, who's basically a bounty hunter and doesn't respect either the Decepticon or Autobot. He has no allegiance to either one. He's basically a bounty hunter, and he basically comes to Earth to cause chaos and start a new war by using the Dark Spark, which is the opposite of the All Spark. Uh, and, um, basically what's in here is Optimus Prime and his group of Autobots that are left, they had to basically fight, um, what are those hell's name, Lockdown, who's basically going to be in a new movie for, um, he's also in a new Transformers movie. They had to basically stop him from destroying the entire galaxy, and basically stop him from using the Dark Spark. That's it. And what happens is, throughout the story, they basically go into the past, and really use in the past, into Cybertron levels. Now, these are levels that remind me of all Cybertron. Those are the levels that I thought were really well done. But, how, but however, it's just disappointing. As It's just disappointing because the story in Fall Cybertron and War Cybertron, they were, they were simple, but they had impact, and they added a little bit more. Like, for Fall Cybertron, it takes place right after the events of War Cybertron, and it was it was a direct sequel to say that, and it also had a feeling of like doubtness and that the Cybertron was gonna fall and they had to leave and it was a, like escape plan. This is just simple: you find Lockdown, beat his ass, and take the Dark Spark. Whoopie do. The story is so simple at times, but it's also come to do with the fact that, like I said before, it does not know what it wants to be a movie tie-in game. Or a sequel to Fall of Cybertron. And this causes the plot to go all over the place. As it goes deep into the past, 
and it goes back to the present, and it goes deeper into the past, as it, it leads up to the events of how the Dark Spark was originally supposed to be destroyed, but Optimus Prime screws up and makes it fly through space for millions of years. So, then, oh, and according to length, this game is way shorter than the last house. I was able to beat Fall Cybertron's campaign, which was 13 levels, in about eight, mi eight hours to eight to nine hours. Top, right? This game, this game's length is far short. It is six to seven hours long, and there are 14 missions. And sometimes these missions are sometimes short as hell, which kind of bugs the hell out of me. Why didn't they just add more missions? Though? But that would have made it more supporting, as a six to seven hour length really shortens the length of it. And there's no real collectibles to really get. Yes, there's audio logs, and you can unlock all the weapons at a certain stage or level. But there's nothing really useful here, really, to be honest. Um, then there's also this gearbox system. Which it's not the actual developer gearbox. But instead, it's basically these unlockable pa battle packs where you get weapon upgrades, you get hack systems, and items you can use in battle. Like, you can heal yourself while being damaged, or you can heal your partners. Or you get multiplying scores. This can add up for more money in the game and more currency. This is basically the currency system. You can customize your weapons at the bench again or the trans system, whatever the hell it's called. And that's basically it. Um, like I said, story here is not really that interesting at all, really. And it really ends on a disappointing note. It's an abrupt ending. Really, you're setting off, guess what? Another sequel. Sequel pay at the end of this game? Check. Good for you. You just steal money from that just to make this not disappointing ending. Great. Overall, story wise, it's not even that great overall. I mean, yes, you go into Cybertron and you like play as other characters you didn't get to play in the last episode, like Sharp Shot, and you can play as other like um combatic cons, but it doesn't really feel interesting. The story just kinda just has to move stuff off because it's so convoluted. And that's really simple of the story. The story is subpar, or even less sometimes. Now let's go on to gameplay. We're going to be doing six to seven hours. Hang on. Let me just get my gamepad. Because I like my gamepad. And let me just get the Pro Controller for those who are afraid of the gamepad. Hang on. Pro Controller. So, you're going to be playing the game in two ways. You can play it either the gamepad, which is right here. Or, you can play with the Pro Controller, which is right here. First off, I gotta play with the Pro Controller. You wanna know why? Because the Wii U was meant to be used in innovative ways to try to add more innovation to games. Which was one of the reasons why I wanted to buy Transformers with Wii U, because let's see if they added any innovation. Like, like what Ubisoft did with Still Black, this is innovation of using it as an inventory system. Guess what? There's zero innovation with this gamepad. Seriously. What the hell? It felt like it was just ported from the last console, PS2 and 360, and just updated here. What the hell? So, you know you can use this as a mirror TV, which means that you, every single time you're playing up there, it's going to be playing the same here, and you can't really do anything about it. There's no extra hacking puzzles for you to do here. There's no two split screen co-op here. That's just disappointing. Actually, after an hour of playing with the gamepad, you know, there was no innovation at all whatsoever. Guess what? I quit the game, I turned off the console, and I turn on the console with this thing, and I play the rest of the game with this. And it's solid. Actually, it, the game actually uses a great control system. Well, because guess what? It basically uses it for Cybertron's mechanics. You run, you um, tap this to dash or sprint, hold it down, you transform it to the left analog stick. You can melee with the right analog stick. Um, you can do uh, your special ability with the R button. You aim and you shoot. These are your aiming and shooting buttons. Excuse me. And then you basically have your jump, your reload, your switch weapon, and your camera angle, which means like you can change arms, which is kind of the cover system a lot of people are calling it. It's not really a cover system. It's kind of a protection system, which I kind of like to use. But whatever. The, the main thing here is gameplay, right? So, gameplay is actually really good. The controls are really well done. I mean, like I said before, it's great controls. But, however, 
When it comes to gameplay, let's just go into gameplay here. It's so poor, to be honest. I mean, in full Cybertron, they, vari they had a lot of variety in each level. In one level, you'll be doing a shootout, and then next level, they'll be like this cool type of race sequence, so you have to drive out of the scenario or jump out and see this cool explosion happen, this cutscene. And this, uh uh, you know what it is? You see this walk through an uh, area, shoot a few enemies, and continue to the next room. That's real innovation. That's real variety at your reality. Thanks for that. <sighs> and um, let's see, it's this apart, and this can be repetitive to some. But for me, as a Transformers fan, and I love the second one so much, I really thought they would have done some more. Like, try to take those variety moments when you're not just shooting every single person in the head just so you can get rid of them quicker. And the enemy AI at times are broken. They can basically just stand there, like my partner AI, they'll just stand behind cover and wait for me to kill every single person. Or sometimes they'll help out once in a while, but I still have to kill every single person. Also, the enemy AI itself, they're so par, just like everything else in the game. Sometimes they would take cover, sometimes they'll all bombard you with these ridiculous parts of AI. Let me just go over the, the AI. Stupid sons of bitches, cheating sons of bitches, and broken sons of bitches. Stupid means they just run to you, cheating means they all bang the gang up on you, and make you lose your shit and get angry, and broken, or I said stupid, Cheating and broken, right? Broken is they don't do nothing. They just wait for you to shoot them in the head. Which I experienced on this version. And even with the gameplay, I mean, the frame rate in Fall Summer was well done. It was a great frame rate. This game's frame rate is horrible at times. There's moments where you can actually shoot enemies in slow motion. And like I said, the second one, cheating, sons of bitches, when they all bombard you, forget it, the frame rate will slow it's like you're playing a game in slow motion, which is not fun, because it slows you down, and it'll cause some type of control issue, and then delay, it's ridiculous, also, the game also, I have to suffer, was from, uh, numerous bugs, parts when, there's glitches when I couldn't continue to level, either because the game's Navigation center wouldn't show me where to go, or uh, it would show me where to go, but the door wouldn't open to the next cutscene, or it would just freeze on me, which caused me to restart the game, and not to restart the game, but turn off the console and restart the console, which I don't like doing. I don't like having my games freeze up on me and have to restart the entire console because of that damn freeze up. It's ridiculous. And let's see what else. Let's see what else I have here. Oh, yeah. Now in the combat system, it, it was solid. You run to enemy, you slash them, they fell dead. Guess what? In this combat, it's wonky as hell. I mean, it's just like clicking this, but sometimes I could be right in front of an enemy. This could be me, and this could be my enemy. I could slash at them, and I would miss, but then if he slash, he hits me, and causes me to stumble around with this stupid animation and kind of get back on my feet, when he stumbles me again, and then shoots me in the head, and I'm dead. Which is so stupid. The melee system in part 2 of Fall Star was tight. It was top notch. It worked. This one, it's wonky and it doesn't work at its best. Every once in a while, you'll hit him. But that's. At, at, at moments, I could be like here, and my enemy could be here, and I'll fly to him and hit him. What is this, Call of Duty, where I fly to the guy and knife him in the back? No! No! Fix this melee problem, damn it. And of course, remember the last level, remember the last level in Fall of Cybertron, which was really my favorite, the best part of the game, it had variety. Remember it says for variety, so it wouldn't be damn repetitive? Variety. So, what happened in the last level of Fall of Cybertron? Oh yeah, it starts off with a raiding attack, in Fall of Cybertron I'm talking about this game, a raiding attack where suddenly a raiding attack destroying ammunition, they search another character, an Autobot, and then you basically take out these tentacle shits, which are trying to take down your ship, and then switch to a Bruticus, where he's badassness, destroys everything, try to take down the ship itself, and then there's a boss battle with Bruticus, which is kind of awesome, a little bit too easy, but awesome, and then there's when a climactic boss battle, where you can decide to be Megatron or Oculus Prime, and kick the opponent's ass, which was awesome. Wonder about that? It was climactic. It worked. 
it wrapped up the game in a great possible way. How does this game do with last battle? Um, really simple. You walk through en through environments, shoot enemies, get to the cutscene, beat a boss in a really simple boss battle, and end the game. Zippity do. You know what your last boss battle is? It just be you're stuck in a little arena and lockdown is teleporting his cheating ass all over the place so you can't shoot him at times, which causes you to reload the game, which is freaking ridiculous. It's ridiculous. I'm trying to control myself, I don't want to get too angry. It's ridiculous. The boss battle has no innovation, has no energy in it. It's really just a shoot him down western. But if the western type of mechanic was horrible, and Clint Eastwood wasn't aiming for shit! However, I did like some of the new weapons they added, like the throwback blaster. I don't know if that was in the last game, but the throwback blaster in this game is kind of cool. It actually reminds me of Han Solo's pistol in the old Star Wars movies. Like, pew, 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 and kind of that, like, that style of it. And it would blow up, it would disintegrate enemies. It was cool to have that type of gun. I actually used that throughout the entire game. And there's some other cool app weapons there, but none of them really that much to talk about because it's just so repetitive. The game loses its energy like halfway through, or sometimes like an hour through it. And it's like forcing you to try and do this six to seven hour campaign, which has uh, a new game plus mode, which is called Primus, when you unlock all the weapons you're already unlocked and play through the game even faster. So it's basically a way of saying, I could beat this game in less than six hours, which can be possible if you play through Primus mode, have all the unlocks, and do everything you can just to not get killed. Now, I played it on normal difficulty, which took me 6 to 7 hours. On the highest difficulty, I don't know, it might take you on 8 hours max. On lower difficulties, it'll take you about say, 4 to 5 hours just to beat the campaign on easy. What? You have nothing to say about that? Huh, in reality? You couldn't actually put some length into your game. But that's okay. I understand, because you guys just don't understand what to do with this game. It's serious. Like I said, there's tons of frame rate dropping, so there's parts when you can't even see, like, see any run through a scenario because it's like slowing down, all of a sudden it speeds up, it slows down again. It's ridiculous. However, I do like the voice acting, and some characters are actually interesting. Like, Peter Cullen is great as always at the once and only Optimus Prime, Autobots roll out. Autobots transform and roll out, yeah. And then there's some new characters like Drift, who is a former Decepticon turned Autobot after seeing kind of the bad of what Decepticons do. He is kind of cool to play. He's kind of a ninja, as, a, as he has a samurai face. And he basically, his cool ability is he can basically take two swords that come out of his back and slash people around him, which is kind of badass. And that's, there's not even that many Autobots to play as. I mean, there are some great levels, like... When you play as Grimlock, I mean, there's only like, I'm gonna talk about the that take this in the present. There's this guy, there's Grimlock, and then there's Bumblebee, and then there's Drift. That's the only Autobot you play in the main campaign missions in the present on Earth. And that's really it, really. Um, Grimlock's level was actually the most fun for me because she, it was really badass. It reminded me of Fall Cybertron, but a less fun and more repetitive way. By basically saying, oh, that's just a fun, that, but, and that level is also ruined by doing another cheap way just to continue level. A defend, def, defend Optimus Prime mission before he gets shot in the head. And sometimes I have to do something fun because then they just throw bombarding waves of enemies at you that come in every single direction, and your freaking dino buys so as slow that you take them like 10 seconds to throw the one he wiped to the other direction. It's freaking ridiculous. Come on. Do it right. Seriously. Alright, uh, mm -hmm, well, gameplay going over it is just average, maybe even lower at times. Now, let's go on to graphics. It uses Hyman's engine as a visual flair, but it's not even as detailed. I mean, the Transformers at times look good, especially in Cybertron, but when you take them to the present Earth time, uh, they look kind of lacking. I mean, this would show you like in cool like design and mechanisms and animations, but they look lacking seriously. I mean, even Optimus Prime, who's supposed to be the badass one of them all, actually has a lacking type of like visual flair to him. I mean, like I said, a lot of environments are bland and forgettable, especially on Earth segments, 
where it's just the same looking facility in the last level and other levels. It's just and it's just buildings that look like crap like always. Wow, great looking details, guys. And it's awesome. Transformers actually look like SM4, and the animations when they transform into their robotic or vehicle form, which you can do a lot of in here, they are good as well. But that's like the only good animations at times. I mean, cutscenes look good, but that's it. Cybertron looks also good as well, but it doesn't look really outstanding at all, to be honest. I mean, the visuals, they're lackluster, to be honest. They didn't really look as good as Fall Cybertron's. I, I played Fall Cybertron after I played Rise of the Dark Spark. And this game looks better. It looks better than this. This came out a few days ago, and this comes out two years ago, and this game looks better. How, how can you even say anything about this? I mean, maybe it might look better on next gen, but come on. Seriously, you can't put enough detail of visual quality into your game. Um, I actually got this version because it was actually cheaper. It was 50 bucks. Um, so if you like with the old consoles and you trying to play a piece of shit game, go get the Wii version maybe because it's cheaper, 50 bucks. But then I found out why it was 50 bucks. There's another game that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes about so why it's 50 bucks. So wait, I already went over the graphics. I mean, it's lackluster. Let's go into multiplayer. Oh wait, I forgot because Edge Reality can't do multiplayer on a Nintendo server, so there's no multiplayer at all. There is no online functionalities here. Nothing, nothing of multiplayer is here at all. I mean, Edge Reality said that they weren't going to do a competitive online multiplayer for all consoles. When it comes to co-op escalation or horde mode, that I thought I was gonna have fun with to play with some friends. Guess what? They took that mode out of the Wii U version so you can just play the other console versions. Are you kidding me? You can't make a server where you can just hook up four people together just to take down a couple of robots? Are you that kidding me? What was the budget for this game that it, it barely had enough time? I mean, this game's port from the consoles looks kind of, it's disappointing, it makes the game look stupid. Now, another game suffer from this type of thing, like Batman Arkham Origins. Batman Arkham Origins for PS3 and 360, they were supposed to have, they had multiplayer. Splash damage in the multiplayer for the 360 and, Wii and PS3 and PC. Wii U versions? No multiplayer. No splash damage, because splash damage can't figure out how to do Wii U servers, maybe? I don't know. So, guess what? This game suffers from the exact same thing. I'm sorry. I, I got games in my Wii U library that allows me to play multiplayer. I'm going to show you a few. I'm going to show you a few. So, not Batman. So, Just Dance 2014. It has multiplayer. See that? That means it has online multiplayer. We can dance against people. Princess L Blacklist has multiplayer. Online and cooperative. Injustice has online multiplayer. Mass Effect has multiplayer. Assassin's Creed 3 has multiplayer, and so does Assassin's Creed 4. And Ninja Gaiden 3 has multiplayer as well. Are you telling me that you can't do a simple 4 player co op with this version of the game, but other developers have enough time in their, in their little areas of development to put at multiplayer into their versions of the game for port? Are you kidding me? Yeah, I had the same problem with Batman Arkham Origins. But at least it gave me more challenges. It gave me challenge mode. It was more worth. It was more value in this disc for 50 bucks. This has low value in its game. However, I don't like to like crap on the game because I'm a huge Transformers fan. I'm a huge Transformers fan. I love the cartoons. Oh, I even love Michael Bay's films that everyone shits on. I love their Michael Bay's films. I even want to see the new one. Um, but... Compare this to the old Transformers games, Fall Cybertron, War Cybertron, or even Dark of the Moon maybe, at times, this is lackluster, seriously, even Dark of the Moon had multiplayer. It's ridiculous. It's actually ridiculous how Edge of Reality, I don't even know how long they worked those games. I mean, yes, like every single time I hear a movie time game, it's seven months before the game even comes out. But come on, seriously, I mean, a title like Transformers, which I mean is like a big franchise. Can you put enough effort into your game? Are you kidding me? Well, it's gonna be affecting this from now on. I mean, Fall of Cybertron 
what it was a really big redemption to the Transformers. Well, well War Software was a big redemption to the franchise as being bombarded by shit games or Transformers. And False Heaven followed that trend and they made it a better experience. And guess what? We got Rise of Dark Spark to shit in our face and mind us that movie dying games will never be outstanding. Never. I don't know if developers actually put real time to it. Maybe they'll take. Maybe um, publishers will actually give a developer more than just seven months to make a damn game. Maybe they'll give them a year to do it. Maybe two years if they're lucky. But no, they're gonna be stuck doing this at the last minute. This is a bare minimum title right here. Seriously. Absolutely ridiculous when other games for the Wii U have multiplayer and they're not just Nintendo games. They Mario Kart has multiplayer, yes, but that's a Nintendo game. Like I said before, I showed you all these other titles that have multiplayer and this game is just lacking in it. The more I talk about this game, the more angry I'm gonna get. So, let's go into the final verdict. I would have given it a 6.5 out of 10 if it had a multiplayer at least escalation. But since they took the pack, the multiplayer away from this experience, I was so upset about it. So at the end of the day, the final verdict is a 5.5 out of 10. That's my score of this. It's not a piece of shit, but it isn't anything special. I thought it was going to be like one of those movie tank games that would be a good, at least, good or great. But guess what? It, it took a dump in my face and said, screw you and give me a 50 bucks. Ridiculous. <sighs> well, if you're really going to buy this game, take your chances really for it. Or if you're really going to buy it, just go get the tickets for it. And then maybe return the game and get your money back. Or buy it to get other games like... Who knows, Donkey Kong, Top of Gold Freeze if you didn't buy it for Wii U, or if you have any other console, get it for another game for that console. Like, I'm, I might do this for Sniper Elite 3, maybe. Who knows, I really don't know right now. I'm just pissed off how this game kind of grabbed me into it. I mean, I should be expecting some movie time games. I mean, I know, come on, seriously. This is what I get in a full package. A 5.5 out of 10 game for me. It's disappointing. It is lackluster. I'm sorry to say it, but it is. It is disappointing. It, it hurts my heart because I really wanted to love this game a lot more than I had to contest. It hurt me that I had to come out and say this about the Transformers franchise. In fact, I got the tickets for the, for the movie that's coming out tomorrow, maybe. But I, I'm definitely going to see the movie and, I, and I'm... I would be happy that I got the game for it, but that's not enough to really give this game a high score, so it's a 5.5 out of 10 for me. Um, so, overall, if you enjoyed the game, good for you. You enjoyed it. You like getting the bare minimum in a Wii U version. If you got it for other consoles, 360, PS3, PS4, Xbox One, and maybe it's a 6 out of 10 or a 6.5. Me, it might be a 6. For the fact that the same game, but multiplayer. A four player called multiplayer. That's 15 ways. Maybe even less for the developers' lackluster timing. So, if you want to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, go ahead and do that. My, uh, my, you can, you can find me on Facebook because I'm going to put like the name of my Facebook name online and Twitter on there as well. On Twitter, my name is DMarkGov1907. On Facebook, I am Michael Martinez. So that's my name on Facebook and Twitter. Also, like the video, comment below, and subscribe. Tell me what you think about this game. Did you buy this game? Did you expect to be a piece of shit? That's all to you guys. I will review a movie soon. Um, I'm just really like bombarded with all this stuff, and I don't think I'm going to survive through the summer. So, bye guys.